happening, everyone? Well, we're back, folks. I'm, I'm absolutely amazed to see this great crowd at our first, first live uh, Connecting Cornelius coffee chat in how many years, Andrew? Two plus. <laughs> And we've kept them going by uh, the virtual means, Zoom and uh, Facebook Live. Uh, I don't think we've missed a beat, but at the same time, it's just great to be around folks again uh, and, and have this, this conversation. We were also on Facebook Live. Uh, we're also on Zoom again, so we'll have a number of folks that will continue to join us that way. Uh, all y'all are welcome to do that, but we'd rather see your your smiling faces here as well. So... Uh, I just, first of all, I want to thank H2 and Josh McC McCracken for his uh, uh, hospitality to allow us to come back to H2 once once again. Uh, the coffee's in the back. Uh, coffee's on the town of Cornelius today. So uh, so jump back there and uh, we'll just be informal as we move, move through our program today. Uh, again, my name is uh, Mayor Woody Washam. It's a, it's a pleasure to have a great program for you. I think most of my commissioners are here. A couple are, couple are missing, but uh, first of all, I want to introduce the ones that are here. Don't, don't let me overlook you because I don't have my glasses on, but uh, I see uh, Commissioner Dennis Billadu, Commissioner Sansbury, Commissioner Furched, and... Uh, and I think that's it at the moment. Others may arrive, but we're going to kick this off and get into our program today. As we start out in, in every one of these for the past uh, COVID years, we all always get an update uh, formally from our uh, public health director, Gibby Harris. But we have a new public health director, and that's Dr. Raynard Washington. And uh, Dr. Washington has driven up all the way to Cornelius. He's, he says the toll lanes worked. <laughs> we won't go. We won't go there. But uh, I understand, uh, Dr. Washington. We we do appreciate you being here today. Uh, it's still important to stay on top, even though we are we're on hopefully the back end of this pandemic. It's still important to stay on top of keeping our citizens safe. So a lot of bumps in the road over the past couple of years, but uh, but the road's getting smoother. So. Dr. Washington, if you'll come up here, uh, it's better for our cameras, and uh, we'll let you give us a, an update. Thank you, sir, for being here. Of course. My pleasure. I, I didn't realize the toll lane was going to be a, a point of discussion. <laughs> I just thought I was making conversation. <laughs> Someone's got to tell me the backstory at some point. Um, great to be. Good morning, everybody. Uh, great to be up here this morning. Uh, good to be in person and see everybody's face. Uh, it's certainly exciting for me uh, because I've spent the last two years behind a computer screen. <laughs> uh, that I, I moved to Charlotte in um, March of 2020, just as COVID was starting. So uh, it's been uh, quite the experience uh, working in public health here uh, in in an office all the time. So uh, that said, I have a very short COVID update this morning. Not a lot of activity happening. Uh, our case counts and all the numbers we track on a regular basis continue to be low. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of activity with the new subvariant of Omicron, but at this time, nothing to be concerned about. Uh, we're gonna watch that really, really closely uh, and we'll keep folks posted whenever we start to see any kind of activity that's concerning. Uh, we do expect that there will probably be some additional surges this year, uh, and so we will see more COVID, uh, but I tell folks uh, every day, uh, enjoy it while it's not here. <laughs> um, and certainly, um, it is, it's good to get back to some things that we, we were doing before COVID started. So um, we are a couple of updates on the vaccine front. Uh, the last week, uh, the CDC and FDA did authorize a fourth uh, dose of the vaccine for adults who are 50 and older. Uh, four months after the first booster, uh, that is um, took effect almost immediately. So last Thursday, I believe it was, and so we are offering those at all of our health department locations. Um, I don't know yet whether or not it's going to be an annual uh, vaccine that we're going to be having to get or not, uh, but they're watching that very closely, and we'll keep folks posted as we learn more about that. 
Uh, I do want to make one other announcement that's not COVID related. That's all of my COVID news, and I'm happy to take any questions about that. Uh, we also, the health department's also responsible for a whole lot of other things in the county. Uh, one one of those things is pool inspections. Uh, so if anybody has a pool, uh, make sure that you put your applications in because they're due next week. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure we get folks inspected before the summer season comes up. So uh, that's all I got. I'll take any questions. Uh, so tell us about uh, your projection for any new variants. How do you feel about that? Right now, we uh, so we have a um, <clears throat> we do have a sequencing program here. Uh, we're on a weekly basis sequencing at least uh, 100 of the positive cases that are detected in the community. Uh, and in fact, we've had so few cases we've been struggling to get 100, which is a good problem to have. Uh, but we have not seen any new, new variants of concern, and at this time, there hasn't been any uh, chatter on the global scene about any new variants of concern, with the exception of this sub-variant of uh, the original Omicron. Great. And um, there's a new booster shot that's been approved for yep. some of us that uh, qualify, right? Yep, 50 and older. Uh, if you got um, any, of the, any of the vaccines, actually, but uh, the Pfizer and Moderna are the ones that you would want to get a booster of at this time. So should you get the, the, the same booster that aligns with your other uh, Pfizer or Moderna? You, you should or you can. You don't have to. Don't have uh, to. Yeah, so you've, they've uh, lifted pretty much every restriction on the brand of the vaccines with the exception of the distinction between the, MNR, the, the Pfizer and Moderna basically can be mixed. Uh, and even the Johnson & Johnson, if you got that as your first dose, uh, they're actually recommending now that you get something different. Uh, either Pfizer or Moderna for your second doses because that one is um, was a single dose series. You can do it. Uh, that has not been sort of a um, actual recommendation though. So you you can do it, but it's not something that they've been recommending. Uh, yes, sir, Commissioner. Hey, Dr. Watson, you said you're unsure about future um, vaccinations, right, for coronavirus. Yeah. What do you think about some of these companies that are working on a combination of influenza and coronavirus? Do you recommend a combination shot, or if it is recommended, would you prefer to keep them separate? Sure. I, I think it's a, a smart idea, uh, especially if we're going to need a booster on an annual basis, which it's it seems that way right now. Um, the, the thing with the... Um, the vaccines is that they're really effective and they're really protective, but that starts to wane uh, more quickly than some other shots. And so at the three to four month mark, you start to see the uh, individual's antibody levels start to go down. And so the booster just helps them go back up, uh, which is the same with the flu shot, uh, with the exception of the flu uh, mutates a little bit more than coronavirus. And so um, in terms of having strains of consequence, so um, but that being said, I think it's going to be an annual thing. I can't say that for certain. And if they have a combination shot, it would make our lives a lot easier because uh, we just have to get one shot and not two. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Not, not about um, COVID, but I see on the TV they're talking about a Prevnar 20 or 21. It's a prescription. Oh, well, it's for pneumonia and and that we got 20 Prevnar 13s a couple years ago and I was wondering if you got the 13 if you you needed the 20. Yeah unfortunately I'm actually not familiar with what that is and so I'd have to go look it up but I'm happy to get an answer and get it back to you guys. You can uh, send it to me and I'll send it to Beth. Okay perfect sounds yeah. good. Great great so we're on our way uh what about masks? Are uh, people are still wearing them, right? Yes. Uh, so masks are, are pretty much optional in any setting with the exception of healthcare settings and public transportation. Uh, so they're still required in the airport, airplanes by federal regulation, as well as on uh, public buses and trains. Uh, they are also required in any healthcare setting by CDC regulation. So if you go to the dentist or the doctor's office or the hospital, they'll still ask you to wear one there. Uh, but everywhere else, they're, they're optional uh, at this time. Uh, and I think we'll keep that up. I think we'll keep that up. That yes. was my next question. Yes. When will that subside? So, yeah. So particularly um, on airplanes. Yeah. So I think on the airplanes, the uh, TSA regulation was extended until April the 16th, I believe, is the date. Uh, and so my suspicion is that it will not be renewed, but I'm not 100% confident in that. Um, but it seems like I, basically all indications that we've seen is that it will likely be lifted after this extension. Um, it could be extended again, but... We're thinking. 
Yeah, so there were a couple of uh, pieces of litigation, actually. Uh, the, the flight attendants, there were some pilots, I believe, who also uh, signed a separate uh, petition of some, of some sort relative to wanting masks on. Uh, airplanes are actually pretty safe. The problem with airplanes is the crowding. It's the, the size of the space. Uh, and so that is the, the biggest concern with those, that people are sitting next to each other for, you know, sometimes eight to nine hours. Uh, but the air quality on airplanes is much better than most settings that we're in, except outdoors, <laughs> uh, because airplanes cycle air really, really quickly. So all the air on the airplane will recycle in just a, about 90 seconds, uh, which is pretty cool. Great, great. Oh, yes. Hey. Next question. two doses of the J&J, &J, and I was going to go get the booster with the Pfizer, but a very good friend of mine who's an attorney told me in Europe there's litigation on Pfizer and Moderna. If you have had cancer, it's the spike protein on the RNA, and I have a history of cancer, so now I don't want to get either of those as a booster. Do you have any comment about that? I don't, and I heard about the um, the lawsuit you're referencing. I think it's a very small group of folks who have put together the um, the lawsuit. I did not look at the data that it's based on, so I'm hesitant to comment on it without having any real context. But uh, it's something I'm also happy to look into my next time I come back here. Hopefully, I'll have an answer. I can send it to you, Mayor, and we can uh, send it around. But I, I don't. Right. I'm not familiar with the details of sort of what they're basing. I saw the news about the litigation, but I didn't read the news about sort of. Yeah. People who have cancer or had cancer, if you are in remission, there was a woman who had breast cancer, was in remission for six years. Two months after she got, I believe, the Pfizer, she was full blown cancer again. So they're wondering sure. if it's doing something with the immune system, with the spike protein for that group of people. It's specific to cancer thanks patrice that's a good question and sure. uh, we'll get back to you give you more detail on that uh by next time if not before i said it was controversial it's okay it's okay it's a good good question it's... a lot of folks will have that same question i'm sure, sure. anything else for dr washington thank you sir of course we appreciate pleasure. you being here and uh, uh can we check the website real quick Are we good? Yeah. Okay, right. good deal. Thank you so much. So, as we usually do, we give you a transportation update. We, we want all of our citizens to be aware of all the really great things that are going on in our world of transportation here in Cornelius. Uh, we've got a lot of money coming at us, but we want to be continue to be reassured. It's one of my highest priorities, if not the highest to make sure that these transportation projects are continuing and stay on their uh, slated dates of uh, beginning and make sure we can see them through. So, and that, that's a, that's been a pretty tough ride over the last little while because we've had some delays. Uh, we hope and pray we're through with that Wayne. And uh, yes, yeah, he's, he's, he's smiling about that. So, Good news in the transportation world. So if you'll share that with us. Thank you, Mayor Washam. Appreciate the opportunity to come talk to you about our transportation projects. Uh, as I've talked to many of the commissioners, uh, we do this at almost every meeting, but we never cease to be amazed that someone will walk up and say, well, thank you for that information. That's the first time I've heard that. So we want to continue to put that information out uh, and, and let you know of any changes in that information. So uh, I'm going to start rolling through this. Uh, this what the reason we want to show you this map is Cornelius coming up we have as many as 13 different projects coming up within a three-year period that's actually amazing because most jurisdictions that I've worked in you're lucky if you get one project every five to seven years so it's amazing that we've got this many now yes we do talk to residents about the fact that there's going to be a little pain because there's going to be a lot of orange barrels at one time for multiple projects. Uh, but when the, the projects are complete, the capacity that we'll have and, and just the, uh, the ability to move around much easier and much better, it'll be a great day. 
So let's go to the next one. Uh, just give you a, little, a few updates on some local projects. If you haven't seen out at Bailey 115, now this is not a DOT project. This is a full town project, fully funded by the town. Uh, it's complete. Uh, we're doing some minor punch list items, but if you go out to Huff High School or Bailey Middle, or if you're out at Bailey's Glen, uh, this is just a great improvement out at Bailey and 115. So we had a lot of comments on that. Uh, it's a great improvement out there. Next slide. So here in 2022, this is another fully funded town project, and it's beginning uh, here in the next couple of months. Uh, it's Jim Street, and this is part of getting our alternative route from 21 over to 115. So those of us who are locals and drive this every day, we'll know this little back road, and we'll be able to do this much quicker uh, than the folks who are using Catawba every day. So this Jim Street extension uh, will begin very soon. We're coordinating with Charlotte Water. We've got all the property, um, looking for some utilities to be relocated, uh, but this is moving very quickly. So 2023 will be the year that you'll see a lot of beginnings in the DOT projects. Uh, the 21 Catawba intersection, and, and you're going to see a lot of roundabouts. Uh, DOT is now into roundabouts. And if you go to Davidson or if you go to other jurisdictions, roundabouts are very efficient. Um, now, some people like them, some people don't. Um, I always tell the story. I had to get my grandmother out. And I had to teach her. Uh, but then after I told her, you can't just sit stop the whole time, then I couldn't get her to stop. I said, you do have to yield. You, <laughs> you do have to look at what's coming to the left. Uh, but once she got used to it, she liked it. Uh, so the thing with these roundabouts is this is adding capacity. So as they eliminate left turns as we move forward in the future, it gives you additional capacity that we don't have at each stop in the intersection now. It allows you to eliminate uh, segments of left turns that will make the signal more efficient. So at Catawba 21, we've got two roundabouts, one on the south end near Hampton Inn, one on the north end uh, as you go down past QT and past uh, where the old hotel was torn down where our new state employees credit union will be. Again, this one will start in 23. North Cross Drive Extension. Now, the good thing about this one is this is one you will not see because it's all new construction off the road. But when it's complete, it'll be a nice north-south connector between Westmoreland and down at, uh, in Huntersville where at Rubbermaid and down at 73. Uh, this, uh, the reason this one's going to take a little bit longer, it's going to start in 23, go to 25. It has to cross the McDowell Creek Greenway. So we have to build a culvert to go across the Greenway. Uh, and we also have to go around an Energy United substation. So this one will take a little bit longer. Torrance Chapel in West Catawba. Now this is one that probably has the greatest impact on a lot of people. And a lot of people don't realize it's got three phases to it. And you see all three phases up here. The one on the top is the most critical, I do believe, because a lot of people think that we're just going to dump a lot of traffic on uh, Knox and out at One Norman. I do believe some folks will choose to use that as an alternative, but you'll notice they're going to improve Knox, uh, give it a new layer of asphalt, add bike lanes, uh, add sidewalks on both sides, and then you'll see instead of making a left turn onto one Norman, that becomes the primary movement. That will be a curve. So you'll turn right to go on to the little stretch that goes up, um, uh, that now where it goes straight uh, past Bank of America. So now you'll be able to just take a curve up to One Norman. One Norman will be reconfigured with a new stoplight. It'll have two left turn lanes to go east uh, toward Town Hall. The other two phases has a roundabout near Lake Norman Jeep Chrysler Dodge, which in the future, uh, we hope that that will add capacity for people who are trying to go down Liverpool. Right now, and Dr. Mike brought this up at a meeting, one of our biggest backups on West Catawba is folks who are trying to turn left on Liverpool. Now, whether DOT eliminates that left turn or not, and we're talking to them about it, if you want to get through that signal faster and you want to not sit and back up, you'll be, you can turn right, hit the roundabout, and come back down. Now, a lot of people just in their mind cannot believe that I can do that faster, but I guarantee you, you'll be able to do that faster than trying to sit at the light and wait for the green arrow. Another part of this on the south side is uh, the roundabout at the post office. 
So in the future, uh, as left turns might be taken away as DOT sees growth in the traffic, instead of turning left from Torrance Chapel, you'll go straight through to the roundabout and come back around. In the future, and we showed this uh, at several meetings, if you sit through the light uh, with a left turn as it is today, it'll eventually take you well over two minutes per cycle. If you go through the roundabout, it'll take you less than 53 seconds to do the whole movement. So you can go through the roundabout uh, in less than half the time that you can sit and wait on a left turn as it, as it will be uh, in the future. Yes. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Let's see, I'm not moving. There we go. <laughs> so the NC-115 POTS roundabout, if you've ever been to the YMCA, that's unsafe trying to get out up at the YMCA at Davidson Street. So there's a roundabout. Uh, it will start in 2023 as well. Uh, the big thing about this is not only adding safety coming out of the YMCA, but the fact that we're now going to have a pedestrian and bicycle alternative under the rail bridge. For those of you who ride bikes and walk to Davidson for whatever reason now, that's not a safe walk. Uh, is, there's, there's not a facility there for you. We'll have that under the bridge just by changing the geometry a little bit. Bailey Road Extension, uh, this is a simple improvement, but will add significant uh, relief. Uh, right at Bailey, there's a sharp curve that many of you are familiar with. Uh, we're going to turn that into a roundabout, uh, and then you'll be able to choose to go straight out to 21. Uh, it's a very short section. This also will begin in 23. I-77 shoulder hardening. Now, this is one that a lot of people don't think about, but it's going to add a lot of congestion relief. It, and what this means is it, it's not lanes that will add necessarily to the capacity of I-77 overall, but if you're going from one exit to another, say 25 to 28, or 25 to the, the new 27, you'll be able to come off that ramp, stay in the shoulder, and go right up the next ramp. I've seen this in a lot of other cities. It works great in rush hour, morning and evening. Uh, this will be a great improvement for I-77 for all of us who use that to go from one exit to another. Yes. Yes. It, And the comment was that it will only be allowed during rush hour, and that's correct. So during other times of the day, it will return to being an emergency shoulder. Yeah, I believe it goes from 18 to 36. Yeah. Yeah, now that, and, and they also have not identified which one will be first, second, and third. <laughs> so we're pushing that ours will be sooner rather than later. So has it been funded, Wayne? There is funding for it, yes. Uh, now, is it for every single one up to 36? I, I don't think that's necessarily accurate, but I think 85% of it is fully funded. So uh, Hickory Street, 115 intersection. Uh, this is a very important safety intersection, part of getting from 115 over to 21. Uh, that signal is going to help a lot of people coming out of Mount Zion, the child care, uh, the back end of antiquity. Uh, unfortunately, we just learned here recently this one got pushed to 2024. Uh, now, the engineers are working fervently. They're trying to get it done. Uh, there's a public meeting on this, and we do need to start getting that word out on April 25th from 5 to 7 p.m. at Town Hall. So if you have any comments about the design, about your desire for this signal uh, and, and this project overall, uh, come let DOT and the town know at that public meeting on April 25th from 5 to 7. So you guys help me spread the word on that. <laughs> I know you're passionate about it, and uh, we need people to show up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very unsafe. Yes. Very unsafe. Let's see, Matt. There we go. So West Catawba phase two. Now this is our big one. Um, that will be widened to four lanes and the capacity will go from 20,000 vehicles a day all the way up to over 40,000 vehicles per day. Uh, and it'll also have a nice median for safety and 
will be set up to uh, handle all the other projects that are coming our way. The problem we have is, as big as it is, it has ballooned in cost. Uh, originally, it started out uh, many years ago at 13 million. It's now well over 50 and close to 60 million. Uh, those type projects are hard for DOT to get going after their cash flow problems. But uh, we're still on the book for 2024. And honestly, that's right around the corner, folks. And in, in my world, that's like tomorrow. Uh, so it, it'll be here before we know it. The good thing about this one is, is that they have never stopped acquiring right away. So if there's a chance to start early, they can. Uh, they're, they're out there purchasing right away as we speak. So farther in the future, Highway 21 widening. Uh, right now, this one dropped from the tip, but it's it's currently still in the CRTPO 2025 horizon year. Uh, they already have much of the right of way, so we think this one can move up quicker. We also think our partnership coming up with Atrium will help this one move up quicker. Uh, NC73, there's three projects here that'll start in 2027. Really doesn't touch Cornelius a lot, but we all use 73, so just wanna let you know those are coming. And then I'll be glad to answer any questions. I will say that I'm meeting with DOT next week to get the most recent update on schedules, costs. We hope everything stays on schedule or moves forward. Uh, I'm not going to talk about anything else because I don't want anything else to be told to me. <laughs> uh, so we're hoping for positive news next week. And uh, whatever we hear from DOT, we'll add to this update and we'll let you know. Yeah, we're having to keep our eyes on it. It's very critical to... Uh, make sure that the state steps up. Uh, I know that I've had a number of conversations related to the Hickory Street uh, uh, intersection that Wayne described a few minutes ago. Uh, Senator Sawyer has been very responsive and has a meeting coming up with Wayne with uh, uh, the head engineer at DOT. Uh, I don't, none of us like the fact that it has been pushed back and uh, we're gonna do all we can within the, the ability, we're not gonna pull a gun on them or anything, but <laughs> within the ability that we have to keep the pressure on all of these projects, but that one in particular, because that, that did slip back. And, you know, we heard about it through an announcement that was made down at CRTPO, which is not a good way to communicate. Uh, we, we have a great rep on CRTPO with Commissioner with, uh, Billadu, but at the same time, he brought that message back to us after a meeting, and that was just not good news. So. So we're a little bit up in arms about that one in particular. So other, other, I think we had a question back here. Yes, Patrice. Since Mike, in a way, helped this whole process, but I grew up in an area where traffic circles in Philly and Jersey, we get it. The problem with traffic circles is that people don't understand who has the right of way. And you can't educate the whole world. And I know that you all have done studies on who's on Catawba and the DVI, and that 50% of the traffic is not Cornelius. So I would like for you to ask NCDOT and for the town to have a campaign on who has the right of way. Because when you go to morning rush hour and evening, people are like, well, it's a circle, I gotta keep going. If you can't get in, you have to stop. I, I assure you that you uh, the, the, no, yeah, the major and chief are, are concerned about that because we've got a lot coming, absolutely coming. And uh, our communications area of the town with May Lynn up here, uh, she'll be, you'll be hearing from her for sure because you're exactly be right. actual signage that explains what right away right. is. Because I'll tell you, when I have out of town mm -hmm. company and my uncle drove a truck for 40 years, he goes, what is that? <laughs> he hated it. So if we have out of town people and you're trying to attract people in, they don't know, they don't understand. Um, they think, well, it's to keep traffic moving. Mm -hmm. So keep people. Mayor, we've yeah, got my, a question. My mama hated it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> got a question right here, Mayor. Yes. Uh, is there anything happening at the intersection of West Milan Road and 21? That is part of the Highway 21 widening project. So that will not happen until 21 widening gets put back into the funded project list. We do believe we're working with Atrium now. Uh, Atrium's going through their traffic impact analysis. 
we believe with their support and what their traffic impact analysis says, it might push that intersection project up, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But they already have a design. We just got to get the project funded. Yes, sir. That's right. Adrian mm -hmm. is willing to help us. Yes, they are. One other question. You mentioned uh, exit 27. Yes, sir. What's the deal with exit 27? Um, we, I'm, I'm not going to throw out all the acronyms, but at CRTPO, we needed to get through the MTP, <laughs> and we've done that, and the, that group will vote on that coming up this year. That will put us in line to get state funding. Uh, once we're there, uh, we're already talking to Atrium. Matter of fact, Andrew and I have a, a meeting with Atrium today uh, where we'll talk about what our strategies are for how we lobby for Exit 27, how we get funding for it, and how we move it forward. Uh, so I think we're in a good space. We're in a good spot. Uh, we just got to push it, and I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, we probably wouldn't have gotten the time of day from DOT without Atrium. Right. Uh, that that has been a huge help. So that, that gives me a little bit of hope and, uh, you know, to look forward to this mm -hmm. happening. So it's it's traveled a long way mm -hmm. since that announcement was made. So, yes, Dr. Mike. Two comments. Uh, when our DDI was put in, official signage hadn't been agreed upon, and now that's occurred, I'm told. So I'm hoping that with the bookend projects, we can get some better informative signage so people from out of town, I agree with uh, Patrice, people out of town know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Also, some roundabout signage with the broken circle is very else helpful instead of this continuous circle one. Mm -hmm. Second comment, there is a greenway project that's going to occur at the bridge on Westmoreland uh, that the county is paying for. Yes. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. We'll keep moving along here. Thank you, Wayne, for that update. Yes, uh, we'll be hearing from you again in every one of these meetings. So we appreciate it. He's got that speech down, doesn't he? <laughs> so I've got a, uh, I'm going to move on to our uh, budget update from the town manager next. I, I do want to save time and come back for a little bit of input from a, a couple of folks on our uh, growth management task force, very important item. And also our, if we have time, our neighbor neighborhood advisory committee that's going on. It's really a cool thing that I want a couple of our commissioners to give you a little update, quick update on that. So, so we're going to talk about budget next and we'll be, we'll be back to you on those other items. I hope if our, if our time holds out. Manager Andrew Grant is our budget guru of the day. We're just fresh off of budget retreat uh, this past week. It was a, it was a chug full two days. Um, numbers were floating everywhere and a lot of good information to take us into making some decisions about our budget. This is probably the most important item that your, your board will do consistently every year. We, we, I don't think we ever stop the budget process, do we, Julie? It, it's like continual. It. <laughs> it is absolutely continual, and but we're getting into the heat of it, which will take us toward many more discussions, lots of public input, and end, ending up with a vote on the budget probably in June, if not sooner. So, Manager Grant, the microphone's yours. Okay, and <clears throat> we're looking for the PowerPoint. I will say that we were very fortunate to have at our budget retreat this year our state treasurer. Uh, it was a it was a honor to have him there, and he just provided some great information to help us in a lot of categories, but particularly with our investments. We're we we are a town with a very uh, we're very fortunate to have a uh, very healthy fund balance, if you will. And we want to keep it that way to keep our town healthy and keep our AAA bond rating. He certainly reiterated that there's there's uh, absolutely critical needs to do that, particularly when you hear us talk about borrowing all this money into the future for our transportation projects. So, so I'm excited about uh, the input he gave us. We're digesting that now, and uh, we'll be back to you with with some things related to the input that he provided, but. He probably spent over an hour with us at, at our retreat, and it was it was a it was a very good session to get us starting to think about various aspects of uh, 
of our fund balance and investing it uh, better and hoping hopefully getting our yields up a little bit. That would be our mission. So here we go. Okay, sorry for the delay, guys. Um, as the mayor mentioned, and mayor, thanks for uh, <laughs> giving us a little bit of time to pull it up. Filler there. Um, <laughs> a little tap dance. Yeah, that's right. Um, so what I'll say first off, same thing I say to every single board since I've been manager and uh, this board as well, the budget is the number one policy document that you will adopt every year. It determines what's funded. It determines what we do year after year. Is where literally we put our money where our mouth is. Um, and we look at it not just for the next year, but we look at it, and, and every board knows this, uh, for the next 10 plus years, because you have to plan out that far. Uh, Wayne just got through talking about all the DOT projects. A lot of that utilizes town funds, and it's years out, sometimes decades out, unfortunately decades out. So you have to plan. Um, two years ago, we started um, our first ever, or we issued, I should say, our first ever citizen budget survey because we wanted to make sure that we were funding, we meaning the town, were funding where the citizens' priorities were. And as a town, there are some things we can fund with public funds, some things we can't. And so what we said we would do, um, and let me skip ahead, we, we basically said, hey, let's get some feedback from the citizens um, as to where their priorities lie relative to what we can typically spend our funds on. And there are, I will call them nine major categories uh, that we can spend funds on. And we ask questions about, hey, where are your priorities? Which ones are most important to you? And these are in alphabetical order right now, uh, but I'll kind of go, go through them left to right. Um, activity centers, develop, development nodes. In other words, um, are you interested in, is your priority for shopping, restaurants, office space, so on and so forth. Literally a town could put funds uh, for economic development type projects. Um, arts, cultural, entertainment experiences. Um, it's no secret, uh, we were partnering with the Kane Center to do a wonderful visual and performing arts center downtown, which not only has cultural benefits, but economic development benefits as well. So these are very important to some people, but maybe not the most important for others. Um, other one on the right-hand side, economic development, business recruitment and retention. Um, goes without saying, the more of that we have in town, the more it benefits our tax rate. It lessens the pressure on the residential tax rate, if you will, or I should say property tax provided by uh, residences, uh, but also bringing businesses into town, businesses that employ people and pay high wages. Um, it's something that we're interested in and every town should be interested in. Parks and Recreation, um, <clears throat> the more individuals who move into town, the more important it is that we have Parks and Rec facilities. Parks and Rec doesn't just mean traditional parks. Here over the past 15 years, it's been a phenomenon in local government that we have greenways. Greenways weren't even a topic of discussion in the local government, government world 25 years ago. Now all of a sudden, everybody wants a greenway. A lot of folks used to be scared of greenways. They didn't want them near their houses. Now every single person wants a greenway near their house. Um, <clears throat> public safety. You know, these are our major buckets, you know, police, fire, we have a communication center. When you call 911, when you're in town, it goes straight to our dispatch center, which is located in our police station on Catawba Avenue. We also have animal control as well. So those are our four major buckets in public safety. Uh, public works, uh, public works is a little bit of a catch all, but it's extremely important uh, because it's, it's all the things that happen in the background that we want to happen if it doesn't happen everything starts to fall apart and we get a lot of complaints. Uh, garbage recycling yard waste. Everyone who lives in town uh, receives this service from the town. Leaf collection, who has their leaves vacuumed? Uh, probably everyone, almost. And that's a service that is near and dear to so many people. Stormwater management, um, again, one of those things, if it's not handled properly, it, is, uh, it, it can be an issue. Social and racial equity, you know, especially here over the past couple of years, there's been a lot of national focus on that as well. Transportation, again, I can't say enough um, and don't want to repeat what Wayne's talked about, but transportation doesn't just mean roads, it means multi-use paths, sidewalks, it's bike lanes, greenways, you name it, any type of alternative mode of transportation, which again, 25 years ago was not 
on everyone's uh, top priority list, but it really has become that. And then finally, uh, last but not least, uh, workforce and affordable housing. Uh, we are fortunately a wealthy community, um, but it's important for us to not lose sight of uh, being able to help provide housing for, um, for our labor force as well. And so I'm gonna back up here to the beginning. Um, last year when we issued the survey, uh, we had 1,100 respondents. Now this is old data and I apologize, we didn't have the, the most fresh um, uh, PowerPoint, but it's still relevant. So some of these numbers have changed. The numbers you see here is from the beginning of February, but as of today, we have um, not quite, but almost 1,100 respondents again this year. So uh, very happy about that. Uh, think about this, we have 32,000 residents in town, 1,100 residents responded which is phenomenal. I know that seems like a small percentage, but normally when you roll out a government survey, if we get 100, man, we're happy. But 1,100, we're super happy that we had so many people respond. Um, oh, thanks, Matt. Yeah, there you go, so 1,046. Uh, we also had um, uh, the ability for folks to provide unique comments. Uh, we've gone through those comments and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so this is, this is the main chart. Um, this is what I really wanted to talk about and, and let you guys see where the priorities lie. Um, and <clears throat> the priorities go from right to left, if you will. The highest priority is public safety. Again, those major bu buckets, police, fire, communications, and also animal control. Um, it was a resounding number one, but a close number two was transportation. Um, is anybody surprised by these two? Yep, and especially, um, you know, I've, I've lived in the area for um, at least a couple decades and, you know, transportation has been an issue from day one, you know, from the day I stepped into the office uh, now about 19 years ago and uh, public safety is always important. One of the statutory requirements for the town as a municipality is to provide uh, police services. And that's something we're very proud of and something we need to continue to focus on. But this also reflects where the citizens' priorities are. And if you filled out the survey, it was a relatively neutral survey just to roll out these priorities. We didn't try to influence opinions as to, you know, hey, this is really important, maybe you should think about this. It was literally, which ones of these are more important to you? So again, public safety number one, transportation number two, uh, parks and rec, um, I would call that a, a close number three as well. You know, this is where um, individuals priorities are as well. Um, number four, which is very close to Parks and Rec is public works. Uh, this was a little surprising to me because again, it's not the, call it, it's not the sexiest, it's not the most interesting service, if you will, public works is not. But what I learned from this, people really do care about their garbage. People really care about their relief service. Uh, stormwater, I mean, you name it. If you've ever had issues with any of those services, you know how important that is. So I, I was really happy to see that the citizens really were focused on that. Economic development, um, activity centers, and uh, arts and culture, I'll, I'll lump those in together as well. Um, equally important, all three of those, and, and they form a really good foundation for our town to focus on that. Um, and again, certainly not, you know, someone had to be, some priority had to be number eight and nine. But, you know, there's also a strong force and support, if you will, for social and racial equity and also workforce and affordable housing as well. Um, what I take from this is that the majority of folks, you know, what they see every single day in their, in their daily lives is an issue with transportation um, and then things like public safety as well. Parks and Rec, if you have a young family especially, or if you recreate yourself at any of our parks or greenways, that's equally important to you. So that's what I take from this, um, uh, this priority, if you will. Um, and fortunately, what I can tell you in previous boards and current board as well, uh, we really do put our money where our mouth is. Um, if you look at the first two priorities, public safety, uh, let me focus on the first one. Um, we, as the mayor mentioned, we we're just, just fresh off our budget retreat. And one of the uh, facts that our finance director, Julie Neiswanger, talks about is what percentage of our budget is allocated to, to these categories. And our um, department that receives the most funding is public safety. Um, we're at 45% roughly. Um, so the vast majority, excuse me, not vast majority, the majority of our budget does actually go to 
public safety. Um, so to me, that's a uh, confirmation from the citizens that we're putting our funds where they should go. Uh, transportation, I don't have that percent off the top of my head, but what I can tell you is we've sold to date, um, gosh, help me, Julie, about $15 million uh, worth of transportation bonds. And that's to help fund projects that Wayne mentioned, some we've actually already completed and will continue to do. Uh, we have an additional um, <clears throat> roughly 20 million of road bonds left to sell. So again, uh, we're putting our money where our mouth is to help fund the projects that the citizens want. Uh, Parks and Recreation, um, let's see, it's been a few years, but we've sold approximately $5 million worth of Parks and Rec bonds here recently that we're current, currently servicing. I suspect, and I know I'll make Troy's day and uh, uh, Scott Higgins day when I say this, I think in the future, we're probably going to need another uh, parks and rec bonds so we can continue to do some of the good work in our town as well. Um, <clears throat> so the good news is we are spending our dollars where the citizens want us to spend our dollars and we'll continue to roll this survey out. We may tweak it each year to make it a little better, maybe add a little more specificity to it. Um, but, but I feel better that we're focusing our, our funds where they should go. Um, as far as the comments go, I mentioned that a little more than half of the citizens who filled out a survey provided literally written comments and were happy that they did. What we've done is we've grouped, uh, and, and Malin put that percentage here, so almost 60% of the respondents left a unique comment literally where they filled it in. Um, 185 comments were to support infrastructure improvements, and this is primarily road type improvements. Uh, 113 support mindful or slow development. And that's a message that we've heard consistently over the past uh, several months. Uh, 48 supporting public safety initiatives, and then 45 uh, supporting parks, recreation, or preserving green space. So again, appreciate the comments that the citizens have provided us. This information goes straight to the town board. They're aware of this, so it can help them as they start to think about how to budget for the next fiscal year. Um, we did take some demographic information. I won't spend a lot of time on this, <clears throat> but in the survey, um, the one slide I didn't want to focus a little bit on was where individuals live. And you can see the, the bulk of the individuals, uh, the majority of individuals who responded were from that Northwest quadrant, which is not surprising because that's where the majority of our population lives relative to that ge geographical area. In a survey, it's a little hard to break up the uh, town into equal uh, quarters. Um, but this is this is what we end up with in terms of where respondents are. We had a very small percent of uh, folks who responded who don't live in town. And I'm not going to go through uh, every single demographic, but we ask these demographics relative to how long you've been in town, um, household income, do you own your house, how many live in your house, what's your age, just so we can understand who's responding. And then at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to our finance director, Julie's nice one, so she can go through some next calendar steps. Thank you, Julie. Thanks, Andrew. So I'm just gonna talk real briefly about our upcoming budget and ARPA dates. So for um, what's remaining for our FY23 budget is we're, we'll continue to have um, budget workshops with needed, if needed with the board um, at tonight's meeting and, and at the 18th. And then um, also moving into May, we will, uh, the manager will submit the recommended town budget to the um, board and citizens. Then we will have a, a public hearing at, on May 16th. And then at some point um, prior to June 30th, we will adopt budget. Um, kind of switching over to the ARPA dates, that's the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, there's a survey that has been released. That was March 17th. Um, April 15th, the survey closes and then we plan to have a public comment session on April 18th, and then um, another ARPA survey number two will be released, and that's to be determined. Yeah, let, let me define exactly what that ARPA piece means. Uh, the town from the, from the American Rescue Act that, that uh, Julie mentioned received $9.6 million. Uh, this is a godsend to towns and cities across the nation, really. Uh, we're no exception. Uh, this this money, I won't say it dropped out of the sky, but it kind of did. Uh, so now our mission is to to make sure we spend it properly. We need to spend it 
how our citizens want it spent, but we need to spend it as the as the uh, ARP directives uh, told us we needed to spend it. So we're trying to keep all of that in line and we're headed toward a plan. But as we head toward this plan, we want your input. Uh, we're going to wear you out with surveys, uh, citizens. So please respond. It does make a difference. We do pay attention to them. And, uh, and that bucket of money needs to be spent properly as we move into the, to the years ahead. I think we have a couple of years to spend it. Is that right, Julie? That's right. Yeah. So two budget years that we, we can spread it over if we des decide to do that. So more to come on it, but please give us your feedback. There's a, there's a lot of suggestions out there. And so your board's going to have to narrow it down and nail it down uh, pretty soon. We hope to... I hope to have this part done probably in May as far as the ARPA piece of it. So, so it's moving, it, it, it runs in conjunction with budget, but, uh, but, but separately really, because, you know, uh, we'll probably approve that before we actually approve the full budget, although they're intertwined and go together. It, uh, it's pretty complex and, and, uh, we, we need to get creative with how that fits together and that's what's happening. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank y'all. These guys will hang around if you got input or questions. For, or I'm sorry, uh, our time's clicking, but Patrice, be sure to come up. Talk about surveys. Yes. Uh, I told my community to go online. Yes. And do your surveys, and I listened to your conference call through Facebook that you were just got. Yes, ma'am. The one on the American Rescue Plan. While we really need to rework it, there were two questions on there I didn't even answer. Right. When you send out surveys. You just need to say A, B, C, and other. Make it really simple. Right. In addition, a lot of people don't know where to go to answer these surveys. Right. And I was wondering if the town, when they do want feedback on surveys, could perhaps ask one of the local papers to put the survey in and mail it. You would need, you would reach a larger demographic doing that. I mean, my husband's 81. He's got a very old computer. He can't even get to your website. I've asked community members. They said they had trouble with the survey. So you can't assume everybody has a computer, knows where to go, knows how to do it. Right. And I think you would get a greater feedback with that. Thank you. That's that's good feedback. And uh, we're trying to figure that out. I mean, we we know we're not perfect at this point. And, that's what uh, our communications director is, is really working hard. So she's got a big old job now, fortunately. So uh, going along with that, uh, I want to take just a minute to uh, talk about two other aspects that's happening in our town. And I'll give them about a minute apiece so we can finish relatively close to our, our limit. But our neighborhood advisory groups goes along with all the things that we're talking about in getting feedback. So. Uh, Commissioner Furch and Commissioner Sansbury are working very closely with that group, and it's a great, great concept. I heard about it months ago, and I liked it from the very beginning. And they have take it has taken hold in our neighborhoods around this town. So I'm going to I'm going to give them a minute and uh, let either one of them make a comment about that. Well, so first of all, Mayor, thank you for the time. We'll be really quick. So this is a new concept, and within new concept, we've experienced some opportunities to get this going. Um, but the whole point, and this came out of the recent election, was that citizens felt a need or desire to have, and we use the word conduit, right, between government and citizens regarding a whole host of, of topics, right? So the concept is very simple. We're going to have meetings. We started with HOA and or neighborhood leaders. We're going to have monthly meetings. And the goal is twofold, to provide information and then to solicit feedback and try to marry those together and help shape some of the future concepts that we hope the town can, can produce. So, And just, this is something we all found out, is there's 175 different neighborhoods in, uh, 175 neighborhoods in Cornelius right now. So that's a whole lot of folks that we've got to get the word out to. Right now we have somewhere just short of 20 neighborhoods being represented, but this will be something that will be ongoing. So our goal is to have this be a living, breathing group that continues on forever and ever. So if you're listening or you're here and your community leaders would like to be part of it, please have them reach out to us. Thank you. Commissioners, appreciate all your hard work on that. 
Uh, I want you to get one minute update on our growth management committee. Two of our commissioners are working very hard on that, putting it together and moving it forward. And that would be Commissioner Osborne and Commissioner Billadu. And I'm going to ask Commissioner Billadu to give us a very quick update on how that's moving forward. Very important committee that's uh, that's that's uh, giving us some advice as it relates to our relook of the land use plan. Thank you, Mayor, and I will be quick, but I did want to at least share with you that we do have a roundabout training plan in place. You know, so if you go up to exit 30, uh, it, there's a few roundabouts there where we'll send you up there and you'll get a roundabout training certificate, right, Chief? So practice up there in Davidson, you'll learn about roundabouts, but uh, uh, moving on to the growth plan. If, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you think the budget is number one in priority for surveys, this growth plan is 1A. You know, the, the, certainly the citizens during the last election told us that they're concerned about growth, over, overcrowding, that sort of thing. So uh, pay attention to the request for feedback on the land use plan. Our, our task force starts on the 7th this week, and we hope to complete that work by July. So we want your feedback, you know, in terms of what you see as the town population, uh, whether it's the height of buildings, but we want your, your feedback, and we're going to look across the entire city, the entire town, to come up with the land use plan that citizens want. So there's a task force of nine individuals, but we want to come out to neighborhoods. We want to get feedback so that we're not happy with 1,000 people responding. There's 33,000 people in our town. We've got to bust through that 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 people voicing what they'd like to see for the future of Cornelius. So please pay attention. Maylin will be pushing out that information in many ways, and uh, we're looking for your feedback. Thank you. Thank you so much. And this committee will be reaching, as, as Dennis said, deep into the neighborhoods and the population of our town. We want to hear from all of our citizens. There's a lot of diverse opinions out there in our 33,000 people nearly that uh, uh, we hear from a lot of those folks but we want to make sure we hear from as many as we possibly can. So speak up, citizens, and let us know what you think. Uh, you know about this process. Reach out to your commissioners and me, and uh, we'll make sure that, uh, that your opinion is heard. So thank you for that. And with that, we're right on top of, well, we're a little bit past our, our 930 cutoff, but a lot of great information. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, Cynthia. You have your hand up. Come up here. Thank you for all of the wonderful meetings that you and your staff have conducted. And don't know, what you don't know, next week we're in Washington. Correct. And I am so glad you're back. Thanks, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. This means a lot to us to communicate with you guys. This, these coffee chats uh, go back a long ways, back to uh, former Commissioner Jim Duke and, and my days nearly, how long, 10 years ago. So, uh, yeah, and before that, uh, Representative Bradford. So, anyway, but it's grown and grown and grown, and, and we're, we're very happy, and we'll definitely continue doing this. Our, a, a couple of updates on the... Um, Right now on the schedule is the 21st of this month. We'll have our nighttime edition of uh, Connecting Cornelius. So that will be the nighttime edition. Do we know where we're having it yet? Mayland, have you confirmed? It's, it's most likely going to be at, at Barley Market with a few confirmations we've got to make. So uh, we hope you'll come out. It'll be way more informal. Uh, you'll have a chance to interact with your commissioners and me at, the, at those sessions. So the 21st is, is what we're looking at, at there. Uh, on, uh, let's see, it's April the, uh, when's my coffee chat, Maylin, the 13th? April 13th, uh, I'm going back and forth between our, our different parts of town and, uh, and just having to sit down, have a cup of coffee with the mayor kind of session. So I've had one. Uh, we had 10 or 12 people to show up at Waterbean Coffee this particular month. I'll be doing this at least monthly. If, it, if it's popular enough, we may, we may uh, uh, 
take that up a little bit and do it more often than once a month. But anyway, this coming month, the 13th, it's on a Wednesday. It's uh, Maylin's calling it Wednesdays with Woody. So uh, I've got a few chuckles out of that. But anyway, that's that's what it is. So it's 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 your format. It's your uh, questions. It's your uh, information you want to provide to me and to your board. Uh, please come on out, and uh, uh, you know you don't have to RSVP. Just drop by, and I'll be hanging out, having having coffee, and uh, uh, I hope uh, hope to get uh, some feedback. It is at ten o'clock. Uh, ten o'clock next time, Old Town Public House on the 13th. So that's that's coming up as well. Uh, let's see, anything from Parks, Troy, we need to announce. This coming coming Saturday, Troy was telling me it's going to be cold, but hop into spring, right? Um, be prepared. Does this work? Be prepared for snow or sleet. It always does. <laughs> That's that's a little too much to think about, isn't it? So Easter right around the corner. So any did I leave anything out? Anything else we need to to announce as far as our schedules are concerned? Your town board meeting is tonight. It begins at six o'clock at town hall. So anybody interested in attending, you're absolutely always welcome. Our doors are open to all of our citizens. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to make uh, citizens' comments as well if you choose to do that. So. Come on out if you choose to uh, uh, speak to our board or just listen to what's going on. So we'll see you later. Um, staff will be hanging around if any of you have some questions. Our, our police department is in the back there. Questions or input for them. Parks is over here. So, so let us know what you think, and we will see you next month at Connecting Cornelius. Thanks a lot.